everyone, this is Sally with the Polka Dot Life. I am an independent Seven Up demonstrator here in the United States. I would love to be your demonstrator if you don't currently work with someone. And I'm getting ready to send out our new annual catalog, which will go live at the beginning of May. If you want to be included on my list, go to my blog and follow along the top. There are some tabs and click where it says catalog request. That will shoot me the information and then I will add you to my list. I need to have your names in for my initial mailing before March 31st. If you are a current customer of mine, you will already be on that list. I know that all of you are just as excited as I am to see what's going to be inside of that catalog. Today, we are going to be working with the Posted For You bundle. It is a very tender and sweet stamp set and a matching punch, but the stamp part of this set is the keyword here. Let's head to the craft desk and get started. Okay, we are going to put together a quick and easy card today, and we are going to be using the Posted For You bundle, which has the postage stamp and the stamp set. And it's a great stamp set for all occasions, and I think it's a great one for beginning stampers. We are going to bring in our Highland Heather and our Versamark. And you've seen our Versamark several times, when it was used when we're going to emboss something. and But this, you can use it also as like a tone on tone stamp. And that is what we are going to do today. And I don't have an exact design in mind today, but we are just rather gonna play it by ear. And I am going to actually, I have some scrap paper just happened to be sitting beside me. I don't want to get this on my work surface. And I'm just going to play with making a pattern. I'm going to be using the floral image and the round one as well. And you can see it, the color kind of changes a little bit as it dries. You kind of just want to vary your stamps and I didn't really want to get that one that close there. So that might just go ahead and determine where we are going to put our stamp. That is one thing you can kind of hide a lot when you do this type of a technique. If you make a mess up or just something that you don't like, then you generally can fix it. It's so busy and there are so many other elements going on that you're not going to notice. You just kind of want to remember your edges. There. I think that is pretty cute. And as soon as we're done here, I will take my stamps in and wash them at the sink because that is just something you need to take care of your stamps and you need to get it off of your stamps once it's on there. Okay, we have our Highland Heather card base and we are going to start with a layer of Whisper White. I just wanted something to kind of, I wanted the color, but I wanted something to kind of break up that color just a little tiny bit. And you'll find that if you use a colored cardstock like a bright or um, a pastel, usually a white layer works well. And sometimes if it's something else, then a black layer will also work. And I'm just going to kind of sit this on here for now. And I have already colored, stamp colored and punched our little postage stamp. And I used my water painter filled with alcohol and I just painted it in that way. Okay, so now this is that part I didn't really love so much. 
and I am just going to cover that up with our postage stamp. And I'm going to bring in our scotch tape. Let's see. I think I want to go around here a few times. Love this twine. Maybe we will just kind of kind of want it scooched closer together. And I'll just kind of, you know, give it our best guesstimate as to if it's straight. Cut this little tail. Okay, I like that now. Let's just put our liquid glue on the back. And it's just going to be like an eighth of an inch border around here. It's just enough that it just makes it pop off of that card base, but yet it still gives us all of that great purple color. We have some dimensionals. And this postage stamp goes north to south. So I'm gonna leave just a little bit of space there in the middle. That way it doesn't get caught up in that twine. Pop off my backings. And I am just going to put that right in this area. This is a stamp set that anyone can be successful. You can be an experienced stamper, you can be a beginning stamper, and you will have success with this. This is not complicated. And you know, the great thing with the Versamark too is you don't necessarily have to have all the colors of ink. You can make that work with any of the colored card stocks that you have. I like having a lot of twine to work with. I don't like trying to make a bow, especially on camera, with not enough material. So I might end up wasting a little bit of this, but I save them and I, if they're long enough, and do some things with them. And tie them around some ribbon, just make a little little bow package with them. You know, it's just a fun thing. Isn't that sweet? Now, I probably am not going to put a sentiment on the outside of this. I think that I would just like this one to be a note card. So I have our interior layer and that I just stamped with that same stamp and I did it in the Highland Heather. You could decorate with designer series paper, whatever it is that you have. But I just kind of needed a generic note card. So I thought this would work really great for spring. And that is super, super cute. I made my own designer series paper and just put it on the back of my envelope and stamp that image on the front. I love it. 
Another version I did of this card was this one. And I guess I didn't put my interior layer in that one yet, but I painted it the same. I kind of did the leaves a little bit different. This is Mint Macron, and the other one was Pear Pizzazz. And I just made a little bow here out of our ribbon, and I took that same twine from the snail mail, and I pulled the threads apart and just kind of did a little nest behind there, and I did not use the flowers. I just used the round one on this, and so that also will make a very cute note card for spring. And I also had this. I had some Rococo Rose Designer Series paper I wanted to use up, and I had this ribbon here, which is Blushing Bride. You could actually use either or. It matches pretty close to both of them, and it looks great. And I used our Champagne Rhinestones, I painted this in in the same fashion. I believe I did use Blushing Bride on this, but as you can see, you can't really tell that big of a difference. And on the inside, I used our Oval Occasions punch set and I stamped Happy Birthday on that and put my scrap of designer series paper there. I just um, did this as a full layer behind here and then I had another piece. I just flipped it over and put it on the front. And I think that they make for some really cute and happy cards. Let's just put them all out here together. None of them are difficult in any way at all, but I love them. They make me happy. I love this stamp set. I don't know if it's going to stay around for the next catalog or not. You might want to check on that after watching this video. Our retirement list was coming out just after I filmed this. So I wanted you to see this. It's such a great, great set. It's sweet. It's tender. It's very springy. Um, I just think that it makes for great, simple cards. And like I say, anyone would be successful. As always, remember to be kind, send a card, and do something creative. Bye-bye.